Rocks are at the core of geology and are studied extensively in the field, in hand specimens, and with a petrographic microscope using thin sections. They record and reveal events and processes in Earth's history we would otherwise never know existed. The boulders in the rock garden in front of the Berkeley Seismology Lab's home includes examples of igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic rocks. We call this McConehenge. Let's catch up with Sarah Baroff, who can take us on a tour of the rock garden. Here we have a columnar basalt, which is an extrusive igneous rock. Extrusive means it comes out of a volcano, and, in, and igneous means that it's from the mantle or below. This is a columnar basalt, and what that means oh, is yeah. as the magma yeah. comes out of the volcano and cools, it actually contracts along these jointing planes. These flat lines you see here are not artificial. They're actually how the rock cools. And it's really cool because if you get a whole bunch of these, you get hexagonal columns like at Devil's Post Pile National Monument. Here we have an intrusive igneous rock compared to the extrusive basalt we just saw. This is a granodiorite from the Sierra Nevada. The quarry where this was quarried is called the Raymond Quarry in Knowles, California. This rock you'll probably see it all over campus even if you don't recognize it. John Galen Howard, who is the architect of a lot of buildings on UC Berkeley's campus, liked this rock from this quarry and made the Campanile, or Sather Tower, Doe Library, and Wheeler from rocks from this quarry. One of the interesting things about this rock is it's actually just a raw, rough-hewn rock and you can see where the stakes and dynamiting happened on the side. Here is a metamorphic rock. This here is the Yule Marble from the quarry, the Yule Quarry in Colorado. One of the places you might have seen this rock is the Lincoln Memorial and the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier in Washington, D.C. More locally here at UC Berkeley, Professor Francis Turner made much of his career studying this very pure calcite marble. Here is a piece, a beautiful piece of petrified wood. Um, you can actually see from the top and even from the side that it still maintains the characteristics of a tree. It used to be a tree. And what happens with petrified wood is you have a tree that dies and it goes into, say, a bog. And what happens in the bog is that it is in an, what's called an anoxic environment. There's no oxygen in the environment, so none of the little buggies and funguses that break down wood can actually do the breaking down. Now, pair this with this bog or whatever being close to a volcano. So there's a lot of silica in the air, a, little, a lot of silica in the water. And what happens is, cell by cell, silica replaces the wood and the cellulose and all of the parts of the tree, so it keeps the same shape as the tree, but it's actually a rock. This rock is actually all one mineral. It's all quartz. So because it's all one mineral and we don't know exactly where it came from, this rock is neither igneous, metamorphic, nor sedimentary. This type of rock, vein quartz, is important to California because this is typically where you can find gold, like in the gold rush of 1849. What happens is when you have an igneous or even sometimes metamorphic environment, you get a fluid of what's left over, which is usually SiO2, then forms quartz. But also, you have spare ions like gold that don't fit into mineral structures, and they go into a quartz matrix, and then sometimes you can just whack the rock or flush it out, hit it in some way, or look where the water has already broken up the rock and find nuggets of gold. With small sculptural gardens like these, we pay tribute to the past and the discoveries that came before us. We hope that you recognize the meaning of this sculpture and that you stop by to smell the roses, or in this case, the rocks, once in a while.